This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description below. With Tesla's Battery Day event not too far off, and their acquisition of Maxwell Technologies last year, I thought it was worth taking a closer look at supercapacitors. Some believe that supercapacitors might be integrated into the future of EVs. But what exactly is a supercapacitor, and what makes them so different from batteries? Are they really the future of energy storage? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Before we get into the nitty gritty of whether supercapacitors can really change energy storage all on their own, it's worth taking a look at what they are and how they're different from something like a lithium ion battery. Both batteries and capacitors are a method of storing energy, but lithium ion batteries rely on chemical reactions to store and release their energy. It's made up of a positive and negative side, which are called the cathode and the anode. These two sides are submerged in a liquid electrolyte and are separated by a microperforated separator, which allows ions to pass through. When the battery charges and discharges, those ions flow back and forth between the cathode and the anode. During this process, the battery is heating up, expanding, and contracting, and these kind of reactions degrade the battery over time, giving batteries a limited lifespan. But one benefit of a battery technology is a very high specific energy, or energy density, so it can store a lot of energy for later use. But capacitors are different. They don't rely on chemical play in order to function. Instead, they store potential energy electrostatically. Capacitors use a dielectric, or insulator, between their plates to separate the collection of positive and negative charges that are building on each plate. It's this separation that allows the device to store energy and release it quickly. It's basically capturing static electricity. One benefit of this is that a 3-volt capacitor now will still be a 3-volt capacitor in 15 to 20 years' time, while a battery may lose voltage capacity over time and use. And unlike a battery, a capacitor has much higher power throughput, so it can charge and discharge in a fraction of the time. But they have a very low specific energy. It's good for very small bursts of power. And that's where supercapacitors enter the scene. They start to bridge the gap between battery and capacitor. The concept of a supercapacitor is not a new thing, though. In fact, in 1957, the first supercapacitor device was created by General Electric, but there aren't any known commercial applications from that time. In 1966, Standard Oil accidentally discovered the double-layer capacitor while working on fuel cells. But it wasn't until the late 1970s that the Japanese company NEC began commercially offering the first supercapacitor for computer memory backup. In fact, while we commonly refer to many products as supercapacitors or ultracapacitors, those two terms are used interchangeably and really depends on what company is producing it and what they want to call it. For the most part, it's really just a trademark thing. In the 1990s, products such as Econ's PS Cap, which is a starter for diesel trains, began hitting the market and pushing the boundaries of energy storage and capacitor applications. Companies like Maxwell Technologies, Murata, and Tecate generally dominate the supercapacitor field. But recent developments in graphene-based capacitors are once again pushing the growth of supercapacitor efficiency and application. But I'll talk more about that a bit later. First, we need to talk about how a supercapacitor works, and how it's different than a regular capacitor because it's kind of cool. It's starting to venture towards a battery's design and use an electrolyte on either side of an insulator. When current is applied, ions build up on either side of the insulator and create a double layer of charge. What makes a supercapacitor truly superior to a normal capacitor, or even a battery, is the distance between the metal plates. In a normal capacitor, the distance is around 10 to 100 microns, and a micron is 1,000th of a millimeter. But a supercapacitor, that distance is narrowed to 1,000th of a micron, and that smaller distance leads to a larger electric field, or more energy. Not to mention, the carbon-coated plates on supercapacitors increase the available surface area for storage capacity by up to 100,000 times. That's a lot more energy available for use than a normal capacitor. So what are these power-hungry little titans used for? We're really just at the beginning of supercapacitor applications, but in general, they've been found to have the biggest potential for application in hybrid transportation. Cue the Tesla Maxwell speculation here. Toyota, Peugeot, Mazda, and even Lamborghini have all released models of vehicles that use some combination of supercapacitors and conventional lithium-ion batteries. Believe it or not, even though Tesla invested $200 million to purchase Maxwell Technologies, Elon Musk has said his focus is not on expanding the use and development of Maxwell's supercapacitors for Tesla vehicles, but instead their battery manufacturing technology. However, cars like Toyota's hybrid R-concept car and Lamborghini's high-powered Sion are using supercapacitors for a very specific role—power regeneration systems during deceleration. 
In other words, when cars are slowing, the energy generated from that action is stored by supercapacitors on board and later used for acceleration, saving batteries for less strenuous actions. It's taking advantage of a supercapacitor's superior power throughput. A fantastic example of how effective supercapacitors can be is right in Switzerland, where a fleet of buses will be exposed to charging stations at a variety of stops along their route. Just 15 seconds can top the energy charge off, and only a few minutes would be needed to give it a full charge from nothing. With frequent top-offs, it makes up for the lack of energy density and storage. And because supercapacitors can draw lower current over a period of a few minutes at a time, this puts less stress on the grid. However, supercapacitors still can't compete with lithium-ion batteries when it comes to that high specific energy and long-term energy storage. But despite that, some companies are making progress in projects that are poised to make supercapacitors more universally applicable. You may have watched my recent videos on graphene and carbon nanotubes. Well, those materials are actually playing a role in the future of supercapacitors. Companies like Nawa Technologies and Skeleton Technologies have taken supercapacitors to the next level by incorporating graphene into the coating on the metal plates. They've taken this and expanded the conventional use of supercaps into markets like components for e-motorcycles, spacecrafts, and wave energy technology. Graphene provides the next generation of supercapacitors with an interesting array of improvements. In particular, graphene offers substantially more surface area, giving supercapacitors even more capacity for energy storage. But in addition to that, graphene is ultralight and has unique elasticity and is incredibly strong. In fact, Nawa Technologies, Skeleton, and other supercapacitor battery companies have already found major applications for their graphene-based supercapacitors. Skeleton's products can be found helping power major tram systems in big European hubs like Warsaw and Mannheim. But it's not just trams and urban transportation that Skeleton has found a use for. They're working with the European Space Agency on a potential approach for sudden power usage on satellites and spacecraft, as well as developing an ultracapacitor module for use in wind turbines to help manage the blade pitch control. Nawa's Nawa Racer, an e-motorcycle that packs a serious punch, is showing the world what an ultracapacitor lithium-ion hybrid power system can do in smaller vehicles, by making this bike incredibly efficient. While the bike itself isn't being rolled out for commercialized sale, what it's doing is proving to other companies interested in the potential of supercapacitors that this technology is groundbreaking. The bottleneck in absorbing all of the regenerative braking power is the battery, which has a very slow charge rate. The supercapacitor combo allows it to recoup about 80 to 90% of the energy from braking and then immediately reuse that for acceleration. But wait, there's more. Eaton's supercapacitors are built to pair with battery systems. The Ungazoo Optoelectronics Fast Charging Laptop Battery System, EarthDOS Supercap Battery Mixture for e-bikes and motorcycles, and Zapco's e-scooters are all examples of small power management companies that are experimenting with application of supercapacitors in their technology. With all of these examples, there doesn't seem to be any mass movement towards the replacement of batteries with supercapacitors in everyday technology. So why is that? Well, the short answer is that supercapacitors, while superior to traditional capacitors in their ability to store and release energy, are still not able to replace the function of conventional lithium-ion batteries, mainly because lithium-ion batteries pack a punch that supercapacitors can't in the form of specific energy or energy density. Lithium-ion batteries have about a 250 watt hours per kilogram, versus ultracapacitors at about 20 watt hours per kilogram. But even companies that focus on supercapacitor technology, like Skeleton Technologies, admit that a hybridization of lithium ion and supercapacitor driven power systems could propel electric technologies into the next era. And the reality is that most of the applications that we see today are some sort of combination between the two. When a supercapacitor is placed in parallel with a traditional battery, we see drastic changes in the battery lifespan. The process essentially works like this. The presence of a supercapacitor in parallel with a regular battery basically just reduces the workload and intensity level that the battery has to endure, giving the battery more longevity. In some research, it's shown that it can extend the life of a battery by up to four times. So why aren't we seeing this in all EVs? Well, battery technology in EVs is currently good enough, and it's getting better for how we're using it. The expense for going down this path may not be worth the investment. For technology that's nearly 65 years old, supercapacitors have yet to really find their place in electric technology. But it seems that in unison with lithium-ion batteries, and with graphene being applied more and more commonly, supercapacitors are slowly building themselves an important role in hybrid technology. And that's something that's easy to overlook. The importance of streamlining and improving efficiency of current technologies by adding, not replacing a component to the mix. Supercapacitors could play that role making lithium-ion batteries, which have high energy density, more useful over longer and longer periods of time. 
the potential is there for supercapacitors to take charge of the energy storage game and redefine what energy storage really is. We still have ways to go, but it will be very interesting to see how they're applied, not just to electric cars, buses, and other transportation, but to renewable energy and the grid as well. And if you'd like to dive a little deeper on the underlying principles of supercapacitors, like static charge and how protons and electrons move, attract and repel each other, check out the Electricity and Magnetism course at Brilliant. This has been one of my favorite courses so far. But even if you're not attracted to learning about magnetism, see what I did there? They have over 60 courses, including topics in computer science, physics, and mathematics. They teach all of the concepts through fun and interactive challenges, which help you understand the why of something, not just the how. This is really tapped into the way I learn. It helps to develop your intuition and is my favorite part of Brilliant. So go to brilliant.org slash undecided to sign up for free. The first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. So what's your take? Jump in the comments and let me know what you think about supercapacitors, and if you think Tesla may end up using them. And as always, a special thank you to all of my patrons. All of your support is really helping to make this possible. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here, and be sure to subscribe if you think I've earned it. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.